Hello everyone, so if you watched my previous tutorial, you'll know that I promised um, to to show you how to make the, the shockwave effect on the herb particles. And what I'm going to do is show you how to achieve this same effect, but also what else you can do with it and and try to experiment for yourself a little bit too. So basically, on the, on the previous tutorial, what I made or where we ended was on the the hairs being lit up on the top, which was removed by the hair info and the color ramp, and then an emission and mixing both shaders, the black shader and the emissive shader into one, driven by this color ramp. And for the new one, for the shockwave, what we're gonna add is mainly two, two new things. So if we take a look to the shockwave setup, it's fairly easy. So this right here on the top is the ones we had before. And this is the part we just I just added. So this is what we're gonna make. Add a multiply node. I mean, it's it's actually called a math node, but it changes when I change this name. So I add a ma um, math node and then set it to multiply and then create a new color ramp and a gradient texture and this gradient texture you can actually uh, just hit Control t if you have node wrangler enabled which we enabled on the previous tutorial and it will create the mapping automatically and this is going to be set it to default on generated i think so the sphere is going to be offset it just set it to object and make the object drive the vector and you're good to go and so what it does is the gradient texture creates a spherical texture uh, or gradient in on the middle of the object. And if we connect a color ramp, what I'm going to do with the color ramp is just make the values more bright or more or less bright. So right now we have this color ramp. I want it to be sharp. So I just move the, the white node to the left. And what I'm going to do is just copy these two. Shift D, and I'll have them here copied. And we're gonna have the same stuff here and here. But what I wanna do is flip it. What it's saying to Blender is actually zero on black and ones on white. So if we connect this to the multiply, it's going to multiply one, multiply zero. So in the part that it, the zero is, it's going to delete the white part and that creates the donut form right here. There you have it. If, if I check the emission, check the shader, only the part that's driven by this multiply node is going to be lit up. Now, the way to animate this, you'll see that it's, it's actually going like a shockwave motion, is by doing something that is fairly easy. Just go to the texture coordinate and add a an empty that we I think we already added and here's the empty and what I'm gonna do is just the, the the object is going to be the one that drives the mapping on the texture so I select the empty and that empty I'm gonna just apply some some those keyframes so just hit keyframe scale and keyframe here scale and it's going to expand as you as you expand the, the scale of the empty. So if you, if you actually make the empty big, it's going to scale the texture and it's going to look like a shockwave. So just keep in mind that you can animate that empty and that's how you animate the shockwave. And that's basically it. But I'm gonna show you what we can actually make with this setup and what things you can experiment with in order to become a better artist because that's one of the parts that uh, that you guys have to understand. You cannot stay with what we learn on the tutorials. You have to go to experiment yourself on the program, and that's how you're going to make yourself better with it. Well, let's go ahead and go to the shading part and just copy this, this whole node setup. I just control C and create a new one. And here in the new one, oh, actually, just let me start this shortcut VR. I didn't start it for the last one, but yeah. 
So technically here on a new one, I, I will create a, a very simple thing, but it looks cool. And it will show you how to make simple stuff look way complex. So I want you to follow through with this with me. So go ahead and add a plane and that plane, go ahead and scale it by two and apply the scale hitting control A scale. <clears throat> And then go inside the edit mode and subdivide it. Hit Shift R to make the same action you made. So Shift R subdivide this again, again, and that there we go. I think that's enough. And let's create now a simple UV sphere and make it a little bit smaller and shade smooth. So what we're gonna do is create an instancing for this sphere. So right now I'll just want to make this. Um, plane, the part of this sphere. So select this sphere, hit hold shift and drop it inside the plane. And that's the way we create a new um, parent. And now go inside the plane and go here to the object pro properties, go to instancing and select vertices. This way we can create instancing without array modifier, but on the planes. We don't want to check that. We don't want to see the plane. So uncheck the viewport. And that way we have our spheres. Now, I want to make a simple animation with this. So let's go ahead and add a, a wave modifier to, to this. So if I hit play, it will create this. Go ahead, go to time and just make it a little bit more soft. Yeah, that's it. It looks good. A little bit faster. Yeah. And if you, can, if you guys see it actually on frame number one, it's on top. I want it to be like and zeros for everything. I want it to be plain. So go ahead and go to the offset and just offset it by, I don't know, whatever, whatever it fits for you. For me, it's 45. And that way it will start on frame one, just level it out. So yeah, now we have this motion. It's fairly slow. I'm going to speed it up. Yeah, there we have it. There's our, our animation and it's fairly easy. We can make it a wave. We can wake it this weird thingy, but yeah, I'll just keep it like that and go into the shading part right now. If you go to Eevee, I'm going to just enable the ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space, and that's it. And I'll just stop it and go to the shading part right here. If you go to, the, to this right here on this arrow viewport shading properties, you can actually just turn down the world opacity and it's going to be better. I, I don't know. I, I hate this forest, blood forest on the back side. So yeah, world opacity to zero. And then I'm going to create a new material, which is here, delete it and copy the, the last material we did. Here they are. So yeah. And there's some things we have to delete. Actually, this is not a hair info. We don't need that. Uh, I can keep this and we can actually delete this. We don't need it neither, but you can play with it. I'm going to create a new for a new way of lighting up these spheres right now. So if I connect this, all the spheres are going to be black. They, they, they are actually not black because I haven't applied the, the mat to it. When I actually just click on them, it won't do nothing. It will select the plane. And what I actually want is the sphere with that material. So go ahead and click the sphere here on the viewport uh, tab on the view layer and go ahead and select that material. And that way it's going to be a black material. And the thing we're going to change is this color ramp can stay like, I'll just delete it. And one thing we're going to add, because there, this is not hairs anymore. This is object. This is an object. So if we, if we grab the location of that object and put it inside the vector on the separate X, Y, Z, I'll, I'll show you how it looks if I just connect this location to this. To the, to the factory, it looks odd. And what I actually want is to to just affect the top part, like the seat location is going to be the one that lights up the, the spheres. So you want to add a separate X, Y seat, connect it and connect the seat one to the factor. And that way it's going to create a, a, a leading up like pattern just on the top. So this is the way it starts. And then when the spheres go up, it's going to be, are going to be lit up. And that way you can actually create animations with it. And it's fairly simple. You can create anything you want. 
let's go ahead and watch another stuff. Now, this setup here is a little bit more complex. I mean, you actually cannot render this out on, on EVE. On Eevee, I mean, because <laughs> it, it's messing around with the displacement and displacement is only for cycles. But I'm actually going to upload this this setup to the Patreon account. I think I'm going to make, make a new one. And you can actually play with it. I'm going to show you how it works. So if I, if I hit play, it's going to create some weird shapes. But it actually looks like this. What I, I, what I did was just add a new material and create a principled BSFD, uh, BSDF, I mean, and just make it a white sphere. Then create a mix shader, which I'm going to mix with this oddly looking black, which is just a normal black, but yeah. And it's going to be driven by this whole stuff here. And it's, it's, it, it's with the same concept before, just some gradient texture, color ramp, which creates a, a black texture multiplied with another color ramp, which erases, you can see it, this thing just erases everything. So yeah, right here is going to be zero, one, zero. So then I'm going to multiply it and mix it with a Mosgrave texture to give it a little more complex look, because right now it's just a, a sharp edge right here and it doesn't look good but if I multiply it with a texture it's going to have these odd little like uh, shapes around it and gives it a more uh, organic look to it and that's going to drive the first the factor but then it's going to drive to dis the displacement as well if we connect the displacement here and activate on the material setup uh, under settings I mean displacement bump only and click displacement only or displacement and bump we can create this weird looking shape right here and that's how you can actually create that kind of, of, of stuff so what I encourage you to do is experiment a little bit with the with the setup spheres we just made and with this file I'm gonna upload to understand a little bit you can actually go ahead and change this Mosgrave texture for anything you want, let's say a brick texture. And that brick texture is going to drive the multiply here. And now it changes everything. And you can do that with anything you have, like anything on here on the texture. You can even input image textures, but it has to be like high detail um, object to have the, the image input to, to actually affect it and look good. But you can create anything with this. Let's say a it's just a Voronoi texture, and it's going to affect the the sphere differently. Now it has like some crystals on top, and you can actually just go ahead and change the the type of Voronoi or the type of the brick texture, like the scale and the mortar size, anything you want, and it will create a whole different stuff with the minimal change, and that's what you want to do. Go ahead and experiment, and please, if you do something, just tag me on Instagram, and I'll check what you're what you're doing. Have a good one.